It's getting close to seed starting time and there are so many options out there for grow lights. I recently tested out a number of grow lights side by side to get the results on different plants. And these are grow lights that are expensive ones, kind of medium ones, different price ranges. I have the results and I wanna share them with you in this video. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and it's that time of year again when you get in all these kind of growing catalogs, the Fedco ones, the Gurney's one, uh, and they get me thinking about you know, the next growing season, what type of seeds I might want to order for this year, and also they might get you thinking about whether it's time to get some grow lights, and that's where I was last year, and I set up this whole grow light setup. Uh, this uses Mars Hydro Lights, and I saved up for these for a while because Mars Hydro Lights are not the cheapest uh, grow lights that you can get, but it was my impression that they there was a lot of quality associated with them and I, I tend to like to buy things once and then they last like you know in it, either my whole rest of my life or an incredibly long time versus buying cheap stuff that you know you end up having to keep rebuying and in the long term you end up paying more for the cheap stuff so I saved up a while for these lamps and I finally put the setup together we're going to go over the setup in a little bit uh, but the reason I want to do this video is I wanted to compare these Mars Hydro lights to some cheaper alternatives. Uh, I saved up for these, bought these with my own money, but uh, you know, as is oftentimes the case, I'm always getting uh, besieged to some degree with you know, offers for uh, different products that people want to send me, so I'll do a review here on my channel. And the vast majority of it I turn down. Most of it is just completely inappropriate. It's like, I'll get like like beauty products, like mascara and <laughs> different things. And it's like, uh, yeah, that's just, that's just what the preppers are looking for. It's like a new mascara. Uh, but you know, a lot of it is also kind of relevant, but you know, I, I won't do a ton of it just because, um, yeah, that's not the kind of channel that I got. I occasionally share things with you that I think are kind of nice, uh, but you know, I don't get too, too deep into the weeds with uh, doing you know, one product review after another, despite the fact that they're very popular. Um, doing angry political videos, uh, uh, things that have anything to do with impending doom or uh, product reviews, those are like the top three things. And those are kind of like the three things I never do on my channel, really. But I am doing a product review here because I wanted to compare the expensive Mars Hydro lamps that I got with some of these cheaper ones that I was sent. And, you know, the results were actually a little bit surprising to me. And I wanted to share them with you guys. I've got photos of uh, plants reacting to these lights because that was one thing. Uh, well, whenever you get product uh, review offers, they're always like, okay, we're going to send you that product. So in like three days, can you have a review? And it's like, uh, you know, you. Yeah, you know, I guess with some products, maybe you could review them in three days. I like to kind of take my time with them a little bit, um, but certainly with a grow light, you know, you can't know whether it even works uh, over three days. So I told them it'd be like, you know, a couple of months for me to like test it out. And it's like a year later and I'm finally getting around to doing the video, but I want to do it now because I know there's a time when people are thinking about maybe getting a grow light set up. So like I said, this is the Mars Hydro setup. Uh, you know, these lights are not the, the cheapest around, but they've got a lot of nice little features with them. You, they're dimmable. Uh, you can plug them into uh, mechanical timers and they can kind of turn on and off. Um, they're, they're pretty energy efficient in terms of the amount of uh, light energy that gets thrown out versus how much electrical energy uh, they consume. So I'm pretty pleased with them. But there were some of these free lights actually gave them a bit of a run for their money. One of them is right here. I'm using it as like a little uh, shoulder light for me right, right here. Uh, this is, you know, I, I'm going to put the name of this one down below. I don't remember what it was called, but it's like this little ring light and it's on this really long stand here. It's like, I don't know, what's that like five feet or something like that? Five, six feet. I don't know. Um, and that, that was one of the ones that I got. I think this one's a little bit, uh, weird in that you saw like the little ring of light that this thing offers and it's on this really, really long stand. And I, I don't really know what you would use that for. Um, if you're gonna have like a really large plant that needs a, a tall stand like this, it's gonna need a heck of a lot more light than comes out of that ring. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure what the sense of this thing was. Uh, the stand is adjustable. You can do it at all different heights. Uh, there's like one section, two sections, three, four different sections. Each one looks like it's about a foot and a half or so. So I think like one section would be fine if the base of it was like, like right here or so. Like that's kind of legitimate for how much light this thing is putting out. But uh, you know, the idea that you're gonna have like a, a, 
I don't know, like a five foot tall tree and it's gonna to be totally happy with just that little ring of light. I don't know about that, but I tested it out and I think that my testing actually bears that out as well. Um, so that, that was kind of a weird one, but it was, the thing is, in terms of growing plants, when this one was right next to the Mars Hydro ones, uh, lumen for lumen, and I, I use this. This is a light meter. I used to use this for film production. Uh, you kind of point this little globe at a light, you hit a button, and it tells you how much light is coming out of it. Uh, I use this to compare the three lights. So I was comparing apples to apples in terms of quantity of light. So the test was all about quality of light, like which different wavelengths were being uh, expressed. Um, so I used this to make sure all the lights were on the same, um, on the same playing field in terms of their uh, amount of luminance coming out. Uh, that said, the Mars Hydro uh, lights, they had to be turned down to their absolute lowest in order to have the same amount of light as this light and the other lamp that I was using. So that was one thing that is a plus with the Mars Hydro lights, is you can really turn them up a lot brighter than some of these cheaper lights. And the benefit for that is that if you put something close to the Mars Hydro lights uh, and they are at that kind of luminance setting, uh, as the plants grow, you need to drop them down, or if you want to have more plants, you want to have uh, the plants further away so the light can spread out to a larger area, you can turn up the light so that even if the plants are further away, the leaves are still receiving a decent amount of light. So that's one pro with the Mars Hydro setup, is that it can go brighter than either of the lights that I'm uh, talking about uh, here. But one thing that was interesting to me is that the Mars Hydro light, the quality of the light, and the quality of this light right here, uh, it seemed to have the same impact on the plants. Uh, I, I actually have been a little bit uh, surprised that when I've grown things under the Mars Hydro lights, at least last year, a lot of the plants were a little bit more straggly than I would have thought, expected them to be. Uh, and I had the same kind of results with this light. So the Mars Hydro and that light, uh, in terms of the results on the plants, it seemed as though the quality of light was similar between the two of those. Now there was another inexpensive uh, uh, lamp, and I think this was called, called like Misty Jungle or something like that. I'm gonna correct myself <laughs> down below if I'm wrong about that, but this was a bar, and I, I've got this rigged up doing something else some, uh, somewhere right now, so I'm just gonna show you a graphic of it. Uh, to be honest, you know, shooting these things is always a little bit, they always look kind of ugly in photographs anyway. So here's a nice uh, photograph that I pulled from their website of this one. Uh, th this uh, lamp was interesting because it has the same kind of power output as you know the other cheaper lamp, and the price range was about the same as the other cheaper lamp. But I felt that the plants that were being nurtured by the light from this, and I, I'm just gonna go with Misty Jungle. If that's a mistake, it's a mistake. If it's right, it's right. Uh, the, the plants that were being nurtured by the light from this Misty Jungle lamp uh, seemed like they were uh, not as straggly, and the quality of green in them looked healthier to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you uh, some images here of the different uh, uh, subject plants that were put under different lights. You'll also notice that there is a fourth group. Uh, you're wondering, like, what the hell? A fourth? I thought you were just testing three different lights. I am, but there's an important concept in scientific experiments called a control group. And I know over the last uh, several years of COVID, we, uh, I, I guess a lot of experiments have gotten away from having a control group where you, uh, you have a group where you don't expose that group to any of the inputs that you are testing so that you can determine whether the inputs that you are testing are actually the efficacious attribute that is causing the effect that you're looking for. If you don't have a control group, uh, you know, the effects that you're seeing that you might be attributing to your intervention might not be caused by the intervention, it might have been the outcome anyway. In this case, we're talking about light, so I had a control group where it didn't receive any light. So control group, really important in any kind of scientific experiment. I used it here, and as you can see <laughs> in this uh, image, uh, yeah, the, having light on plants definitely makes a difference. Uh, and um, you know, these lamps that I was exposing these plants to were different than having the plants uh, not have any light on them because obviously when they didn't have any light uh, you know from any of the sources um, you got a very di different outcome so the lights were making a difference and I felt that the misty jungle light gave the plants a, a healthier shade of green and they, they seemed a little bit less stocky to me now the plants that I was using as subjects was a variety I chose a mix a medley of different sprouting grains. Uh, so instead of just using alfalfa, I used one that had alfalfa and there's like mustard greens in there and radish greens and broccoli greens and all, all sorts of different plants. You would have a better sense of what might broadly work across all of them. So that's what you're seeing in these images. So my sense of these different lights is that they all worked pretty well. 
uh, whether you were using some of the cheap lights, whether you're using the really expensive lights, they all worked really well. Uh, one of the cheap lights seemed like it uh, generated some healthier colors in some of the uh, plants, but uh, you know, even with the way that I've done it, in each cup, there's there's got to be like hundreds of seeds in each cup. Um, I, I think the experiment really deserves to be done more than just once uh, in this case to really say that that's like an ironclad outcome of this. I think generally my take home from this is that all the lights worked pretty well. So it really comes down to the difference between them being price and versatility. Uh, the uh, Misty Jungle lamp and this, this weird super tall one, uh, those uh, you know were both pretty inexpensive. The Mars Hydro is more, more expensive, but the one thing that the Mars Hydro has that the others uh, do not have is the My Mars Hydro can output a heck of a lot more power. I'm just going to show you here by flipping this on. So this is the Mars Hydro. You can see it is a lot more light even as it is hitting on my shoulder right now and it's turned down it's turned down all the way so let's let's flip this thing up all the way oh, I'm turned on the wrong one all right here we go so that is the Mars Hydro you know uh, at its full power so it has a lot more power potential uh, than the uh, uh, than than these lamps this is the, this is this lamp at its its full uh power setting. Another thing that was nice about the Mars Hydro versus uh, some of the other cheaper lamps is that while the other cheaper lamps, they do have, here's a little, uh, they, they do have these little controllers that come with them and they've got timer functions and you can uh, turn the, the power on them down, but I already had it up at the, at the uh, highest setting. You do have some controls over it. Um, and like I said, there is a timer function in here. But one thing that is uh, kind of a downside for me anyway, is I love using mechanical timers to kind of uh, time a bunch of different things, synchronize things. I also have heating pads on here. Uh, there's heating pads on these two sides. So I'm having the heating pads run through timers. I'm having the uh, lamps themselves run through timers. And uh, these lamps here, the cheaper lamps, uh, neither of them could be used through another timer because uh, they were the sort of thing where if you turn them on and unplug them, which is what, how a mechanical timer works, is it essentially cuts power to things. If you uh, turn them on and unplug them and then plug them back in, they don't go back on. So uh, you know the cheaper lamps would not allow you to run them with a uh, timer setup, which for me is a downside because I love using timer setups. Maybe you don't care, and they do come with their own uh, sort of timer uh, for flipping them on and off. But that would that was another kind of versatility issue for me. So two, two, all all the lamps seem to like they work fine as long as they were close enough and you weren't trying to do a large area. Mars Hydros can be turned up to be much brighter so you can get a much larger area. Um, I think dollar for dollar, lumen, lumen for lumen, you probably actually get a better deal with the Mars Hydro because uh, they can cover such a large area. If you wanted to cover the same amount of area uh, of plants using the cheaper lights, you'd need to buy so many of them that you would, you'd be better off going with the Mars Hydro setup. But if you only have a small number of plants and you don't need a huge amount of area, uh, that's not really gonna be much of an issue for you. So what it really comes down to is just is, uh, you know, the, the price and the quality of the light. Quality of light from all of them seemed like it was just about the same. So it's really a matter of your application. If you wanna do a lot of seedlings, uh, I would suggest the Mars Hydro might be something worth saving up for. If you're gonna do a smaller number of seedlings, I would suggest of the two cheaper lamps that I had tested, the uh, Misty Jungle one is, it's, again, like I said, it looked like it was a little bit of a healthier light for the plants, but you know, I, I can't be 100% on that. Certainly they were both uh, uh, in line with each other. And one of the things I liked about the Misty Jungle light is that uh, the way that it could be set up was a lot more uh, rational, I think. Uh, you know, this one that I'm using uh, here behind me, it's just a ring and it's on a stand. And, you know, there's not a lot of versatility. It kind of, it's good for like one area underneath it. The Misty Jungle Light is a bar and the bar is rigged so that it can be hung. It can be put on a, a vertical stand. You have lots of different options. If you wanted to kind of make like kind of a grid of them, they'd be easy to kind of rig up. So if you're gonna go for a less expensive kind of uh, setup and you don't need as much area as the Mars Hydro can cover, I'd suggest the Misty Jungle Light uh, between the three of them. But honestly, like I said, having them all over plants, all of them 
provided healthy light and the plants all grew reasonably well. So I hope my ambiguity with this is helpful to you. You can kind of, uh, you know, figure out what might be your best course, uh, you know, based on, on your personal needs. For myself, I'm still glad that I went with the Mars Hydro because it has a lot more versatility and it can expand over time. Uh, but if I'd gone with the Misty Jungle, I think I wouldn't have been disappointed about that either because uh, less expensive and you could expand to just add more of them to your setup over time. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.